Helping Seniors Television, all about improving quality of life for seniors. If you're a senior, know a senior, or plan to be a senior, then this show is for you. It's all about helping you develop your own aging plan so you can age actively and with dignity. Helping Seniors Television, from the Helping Seniors Network of Information, Education, and Resources. Today's edition of Helping Seniors Television covers that topic, how to have the talk. In this case, we're talking about when it's time to look into assisted living. Opening the conversation up is an important part of a good aging plan. According to Heidi Kuchenbacker, Executive Director of Hibiscus Court, Assisted Living and Memory Care, who guests on today's program. I'm Kerry Fink and welcome to Helping Seniors TV. It's my pleasure to sit in for our president and founder, Joe Steckler, and welcome to today's edition. Uh, you're going to love the title of this show. It's How to Have That Talk. And no, it's not that talk. It's this talk that we're going to have because our guest today is Heidi Kuchenbacker, who is the executive director of Hibiscus Court, one of the uh, premier assisted living facilities here in Melbourne. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Carrie. Nice so, to be here. So good to have you. We were joking about this because you recently did a presentation for the Golden Providers, that w and that was the title of the talk, which was How to Have That Talk. It's When Do You Talk? to somebody about that time to consider changing how they're living in that. And I wanted to ask you where that came from besides years of experience with what you do. Well, because I think people have the misconception that there's one talk mm -hmm. and it's a series and it has to be an ongoing conversation with someone. So there's not just one talk like the birds and the bees talk that you have mm -hmm. with your teenagers. Mm -hmm. It's taking an opportunity when you get one. Mm -hmm. So communication is the important part. If a situation presents itself, that's when you have a talk. So if somebody forgets their keys, because mm -hmm. we've all done that, um, that's an opportunity. Um, it's not to frighten somebody. It's to say, oh, so do you have some good habits? Do you put your keys in the same place all the time? Because when you lose them every day, three times a day, mm -hmm. that's a problem, right? But it's an opportunity to say, hey, let's put the keys in the same place. So that's a habit. Habits are a great thing to deal with issues of forgetfulness. Well, you know, one of the things is, as Helping Seniors of Brevard, we're a nonprofit charity, and so we operate the area's Senior Information Helpline, as you know, which, by the way, is 321-473-7770. 321-473-7770. That's a free call. And during the uh, operation of Helping Seniors, We've helped over 2,400 families in the Brevard area get connected to resources that will help them. And a lot of times what will happen is we'll take calls from, uh, I would say, the adult child of a parent who they maybe come down to visit, mm -hmm. and they're now becoming concerned that maybe mom or dad isn't handling the, the things they, they were actually kind of frightened maybe when they got there and thought, is this really safe? You must deal with this all the time. What are the things that you, what is the advice that you give to, to those adult children who are now becoming concerned and they want to make sure mom or dad is staying safe and the things that might. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the biggest time we see that is Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, when families come down for Thanksgiving, our call rates go uh, out through the roof really afterwards because for the first time they've actually been in the room right. with someone and they've seen maybe the refrigerator hasn't gotten cleaned out. Mm -hmm. um, maybe the expiration dates aren't being paid attention to. Um, and sometimes those have absolutely direct consequences health-wise, sure. um, and sometimes it's not. Sometimes you'll see you know, the four-bedroom house that's the be-all, end-all, where mom lived and where the kids grew up and their sentimental value to mm -hmm. it. Um, all of a sudden, there's three doors that the house closed. Mm -hmm. They don't even walk in them. Um, the other part is that you'll see a, oftentimes a king-size bed. If the spouse has passed away, they'll just turn the cover over, use half of it. Mm -hmm. But when they talk about coming to assist a living, they have to have a place big enough for a king size bed. Well, they don't. <laughs> they need a place big enough for a twin size bed because that's really all mom's using. And you see a route in the house. It's typically someplace in the kitchen, a chair, a television, a phone. Um, maybe it's in a living room. Maybe it's in a family room. But people have carved out a route. And for those people with old houses, you'll actually even see it on the carpet. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, that's one of the first things that we see with people. So when when there's either a health crisis or somebody's come to visit, yeah. uh, and and that's when we we see a, certainly a volume of calls go up. Um, what can you do? Um, ask questions. 
you know, don't be afraid to ask questions for folks. Uh, if somebody tells you they're going to Walgreens, but they ended up at CVS, uh -huh. have that conversation with somebody at that time. You know, CVS is uh, certainly a great alternative, but you were going to Walgreens. There's an issue there, right? Yeah. Maybe you just got distracted. Maybe somebody's trying to use a senior using their cell phone in their car. Yeah. It could be as simple as that. So sometimes it's just building up supports around someone so that they don't get themselves in trouble and they can stay in their location as long as they can. But you have to recognize it even when mom says, oh, I've got to stay in this house that I've had forever and a day. But maybe that's not the best alternative. Right. Well, I was going to say, you know, we get a lot of these calls and, it, and, and I'm sure you're, you're very familiar with how they go. You could probably recite it verse by verse. But somebody would call and say, listen, I was, you know, I'm from New York. I was down visiting mom. I ran into this. I don't know anybody down there. I can't be mm -hmm. down there. How do I start to sort this out? She's in denial. He's in denial. How do you counsel that adult child? Or maybe it's the spouse who's now trying to do the best they can, but they're realizing the situation is getting a little bit out of control. How do they best maybe sit down and open that conversation? Well, I think asking the, the question, somebody that even when they start with denial, there's always an opportunity to have that conversation because emotions run high. Mm -hmm. um, we were talking before about the parent. The parent is always your parent. Um, you know, people talk about all the time that, that now the, the roles have reversed and, you know, mom with dementia is now the child and you're the, the parent. Well, it, it isn't ever, <laughs> you know, it's never that way. They are still your parent. The reason the denial, the guilt are so high is because you know who that person used to be. Mm. We in the healthcare industry, the assisted living industry, wherever you are in that system, we deal with who shows up in front of us that day. Ah. We don't have the situation where, oh, I remember mom, she cooked these big dinners, she has to have a big mm -hmm. kitchen, um, but you don't know that she's putting in meals for wheels in her microwave. She's not cooking anyway. Right. You know, um, so there's a, a lot of things that we see differently because we're the adult child. Um, and the spouses, I think spouses are even more difficult. Those are the people you've built your life with. Um, and you have, um, it, it's just harder to see that the person that you chose to be with isn't able to do that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When you, when, you, you know, one of the things that you had mentioned in it, and it was really so, so like, I think mind opening is getting that revelation. Uh, you had told the story once about, you know, if, if, if like a lot of times they said, well, no, dad has to make all the decisions. Yeah, that's just the way he is. And you had some really good advice that you were explaining about. Well, so no, you know, dad is always going to be the dad, but here's how you might walk him through that. And and how would you deal with somebody who who is very much, you know, feels that need to be in control? You know, I don't want, I, I, I figure this out, you know. Well, I mean, I think I, I mentioned at that time, you know, we live on the space coast with engineers. They have a list for everything. <laughs> um, so use that. Use that to your advantage. Start talking sooner. Don't wait for a crisis. Have a conversation over Thanksgiving dinner when you notice things are different. Maybe they don't move this year. Maybe they move next year. Maybe they move in two months. But start having that conversation. If dad's the patriarch of the family and it's his way or the highway, then let's let's list some things. Uh, you know, what can you do? Because that's the other piece of this. We tell people all the time, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know about you, but I don't like people right. telling me that all day long. But it, that's the reality of getting older. Mm -hmm. Um, there are things that we can't do like we used to do, even at our ages, let alone, you know, older uh, folks. So let's talk about what they can do and use that. Um, so if there's an engineer that's just, I'm not going, I built this house myself, you know, <laughs> you can, we've heard, of, we've heard them all. Um, but for what? Because at the end of the day, it's four walls. Mm -hmm. So what do you get in assisted living? You get... You get four walls. They're different four walls. Absolutely. But you get the companionship of neighbors. You get the companionship of an activity together, whether it's as simple as folks that like bingo, because that's something you either love or hate. Um, if you like going to play bingo, then you don't have to worry about somebody coming to pick mm -hmm. you up. You don't have to worry about getting to the senior center or to the church. It's right there in the building that you live. Um, that's helpful. What I, what a really good example that we see a lot. We have spouses and, and there's always, there's I, I call spouses in assisted living, it's like a yin and yang. Mm -hmm. um, it's a balance. So you have typically someone that's strong physically and another person that's strong mentally. 
So typically you don't have that together. Mm -hmm. And what we become for each other in, in those situations is a support system. So you have a caregiver and someone who's being cared for. Sometimes that balances out 50-50, but most often it doesn't. When we have, we've had, uh, for example, um, a family that there's a, a spouse that's diagnosed with cancer and the caregiver is um, really at their, their end. Mm -hmm. And then the family says, oh, we'll just keep them in their home a little bit longer. Meanwhile, they're not going to work. They're mm -hmm. stressed. Mm -hmm. they're, you take the, the number of things that could be happening in their lives. Um, but if you move that couple into assisted living, that one person is going to pass away. There's no way as children, mm -hmm. when we want them to live, we, we are not that kind of musician, magicians mm -hmm. um, to make that happen. They are going to pass away. But if you can make that change early enough, then when that spouse passes away, that other spouse has a, just a plethora of people mm -hmm. around them to support them. Support group. You know, Joe always is uh, from 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 probably even before he started uh, helping seniors with his work with Alzheimer's. But he always said it's important to create an aging plan. So you have sort of a mm -hmm. roadmap of where you want to go with things, and and as conditions move along, that you have this idea of a continuum of care. Right now, I need this, but I could see at some point I might need this, and then over here I might need this. And that seems to really resonate with what you're saying about this, how to have the talk thing, because what you want to do is, as you said, it's not really a talk. It's like opening the conversation and then moving into it. And one of the things that <clears throat> I think is difficult for those of us who sort of aren't in the, in the, in the business, you know, I always explain to people like aging has really got to be considered on the job training because mm -hmm. we don't know till we get there. And so, it's hard for us to put ourselves in the shoes. I know you, like, for example, at Hibiscus Court, I know you guys do the thing with, like, the virtual dementia where you actually get people set up and so they can get some sort of a sense of what a person is actually going through. But it's tough for us if we're not there to understand that. So a lot of times I wonder if we judge the idea of an assisted living based on some outdated notion that we remember going to see our great grandfather, you know, as we were little kids and it was kind of frightening and it was scary and maybe it didn't smell right. And there was all kinds of things, but all of that is so much different so now. Much different. And do people, do, do the average, does the average person understand what assisted living is to, is, is today? Well, I think that's a very good point because for the folks that we have in assisted living today, what we have didn't exist. They didn't right. put a grandparent or a parent into an assisted living facility because it didn't exist 35 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so first of all, they don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. So often we'll have somebody in just to, you know, we say to take a tour, but it doesn't have to be a tour. It can be lunchtime. It could be just come in and mm -hmm. visit someone and say hello. It could be bring somebody flowers, whatever the the occasion to get someone in so that they're not afraid. Mm -hmm. um, and I often have other residents speak to them. I, I did that once in, early in my career, and I said, this wonderful lady, she could just be our spokesperson. She was just so, so amazing. <laughs> and so one day I said, well, let, I'm going to be smart about this. I'm going to have her speak to this lady, and I'm going to leave the room. And as I left the room, I heard, I heard Wilma say to this new lady, when I came in here, I thought my kids had put me in a box. And I thought, oh my God, <laughs> this is the worst thing I could ever have done. But it wasn't because what people feel is what they feel. No matter how we want them to feel, we can't take their emotions away from them either in this journey. So I love that Wilma told her that, although my heart sank, I have to tell you. Um, but they worked through that and it made the other person's emotions okay. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we have to give some room for that. And I think mm -hmm. coming into the building, I always say, come be a fish, don't live in the fishbowl. Mm -hmm. um, and just get a view of it. Come to a, some music, come to a kid, a, you know, intergenerational thing that we do with children, something that they like. Um, and then they can see what it is. Meet your neighbors. Um, I always say, meet your, meet your neighbors and meet the staff that work there. Because when it feels right, it typically is right. You know, I can't tell you because as helping seniors, we're out at a lot of the senior expos and we're meeting people all the time. And we also it comes in from the uh, senior information helpline. And a lot of times the conversation will start like, well, you know, I'm all right, but there is this lady across the street and she's all by herself. And mm -hmm. I'm really getting concerned because I don't know who, she, you know, who she's got. And one of the things that I've heard you guys talk about um, is when you 
finally can release from that concept of I need these four walls and no others, you're actually opening up an entire, I've, I've heard you guys talk about, well, what would you do if you won the lottery? You would, you would get a chauffeur, a gardener. Big house, <laughs> a chef. I mean, I just love the idea. Win the lottery, buy a big house, get a chef, get a chauffeur, have somebody do your laundry, have somebody do your housekeeping. Um, pretty sure that we'd be loving that. Um, but instead of telling people they can't do the laundry because that's where a lot of falls happen, instead of saying don't make your bed because you're going to hurt your back, I have a housekeeper that does that. I have a chef that can change, take a menu item, a recipe that you like, and incorporate it into our menu. Wow. It's awesome. I'm ready to move in. <laughs> yeah. Because the only thing a senior really has to do is tell us what they need, and we'll fill in the gaps behind a closed door. But the rest of it is, what kind of fun can you have? And we always joke around, it's like a cruise ship that never leaves port. Yeah. Because that's what the day is. It's different things that you like to do, whether it's enjoying that meal, whether it's walking um, you know, around the park, whether it's um, playing bingo or not playing bingo. I mean, I have people that, that play on their computers and bring information to us um, for jokes because that's what they do. <laughs> sure. But they have an audience. They're not home alone, right? They can bring it to the rest. We have we have something we call off our rockers. <laughs> um, and literally, because um, none of them are sitting in rockers. But the best part of that is it is like a stand-up comedy uh, because folks have that interaction and that fun with each other. And, yeah. you know, it's a, it's a group of people. It's, it's community living. You know, if you've ever been part of a homeowners association, sure. you know that not everybody likes everybody right. else. We don't expect people to. We take great care to put someone like on a cruise ship, people sit at the same table with sure. who you cruise with. We do the same thing um, in our building so that we try to put people with the same likes together yeah. um, and they're able to have conversations. And then there are people that just really don't want to be spoken to. Right. And we put those people together because that's what we add, the value we add to the mm -hmm. equation. Um, and really, it's just about enjoying life. And our staff get into everything. We were flamingos earlier in the week. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so our residents have been flamingoing out with us, even though our event wasn't even in our building, because they're part, we're part of their lives and they're part of ours. We, we get involved with the most intimate details of a human being, um, family dynamics, health issues, dynamics. Um, and so they share our lives. Um, and when we dress up like flamingos, they giggle and laugh and put a boa around their neck when we walk in the door. That's great. Yeah. So uh, that's a question though I wanted to ask too, because also when people are trying to make a decision, now they, now they say, well, okay, maybe, maybe it's a good time to, to consider this. And they start to tour facilities and they say, well, let me go to some, I've heard of this one. I've heard of that one. And they walk into a brand new, just built kind of facility. And one of the most interesting things that I heard said was, yes, but you're looking at through your own eyes. Mm -hmm. And and how does that apply? Like when you're on a tour of, of facilities, what are the things somebody should look for? What would help them go uh, to focus on, I guess, the right things? Well, you know, there's a million and one checklists out on the internet these uh -huh. days. Um, everything from soup to nuts are questions to ask. And people are pretty pretty educated when they walk into an assisted mm -hmm. living. Um, and, and we're blessed in this area to have a lot. I mean, Hibiscus Court has been around for over 20 years. So we've done this for a long time. Mm -hmm. We have a long legacy of doing it right. Mm -hmm. um, that's a, you know, the experience factor can never be discredited um, right. for those of us. And there's about seven of us that have been around for that long of a period of time. But there's lots of new people on the, on the equation. And that's great because they make us better. Yeah. Um, so we may not rebuild our bricks and mortar, but the care um, is long established. I mean, I can speak to only to Hibiscus Court, but Hibiscus Court, we have people that have worked in our building for 20 years. Yeah. You know, we've had, uh, when I introduce people, um, you know, this one's here 14 years, this one's here 17 years, I've been there 16 years. Um, it, it says a lot for a community. I think that's important. I think anybody that has pat answers to questions on those checklists, mm -hmm. be leery. Um, mm -hmm. because pat answers are marketing tools. Mm -hmm. uh, explanations and stories mm -hmm. are the real deal. Well, I was also going to say, like, if you walk into a building, how, you know, there's probably different things that you would look at and you would say uh, you could be 
looking at something like I love the the concept we were talking before the cameras are rolling about somebody says well mom would want a place with a swimming pool you know yeah, I mean it's my personal favorite yeah <laughs> and and it's an interesting thing because it, it says to me that we're looking at it we're trying to look at it through us, but not our parents who may be 30, 40 years older. How do you explain that to somebody as they're, as they're having a look at a place? Well, you know, aesthetics are, are very nice and you have to be comfortable in the place that you're living. I mean, that's the bottom line, whether it's Hibiscus Court or any other of our wonderful assisted livings in town. So if a pool is that important to you because mom at 90 still swims laps every day, by all means, make sure you get a swimming pool. <laughs> But if mom used to like swimming um, and she used to sit around and sunbathe or she used to do laps, then you have to ask the questions, when was the last time you saw mom get in a bathing suit on her own? Mm -hmm. Because it's not that easy to put a bathing suit on. Right. You know, we're talking about putting um, stockings on people that for circulation. They can't right. do that for themselves either. So putting on a bathing suit, really kind of a challenge. Just imagine balancing, trying to get that on. Right. Um, so you have to ask what's real. You know, are, do you just want to remember mom when she swam? Mm -hmm. You know, or does mom really need to swim? Um, so it's a really, it, it, it's a, it, it's just a small idea of of what's important and the lens that you're looking through. Um, because what's important to um, baby boomers will change the course of what we actually live in. Yeah. But what's important to this great generation that we're serving now is an entirely different thing. That's why we have the challenge of being in your house and trying to get people to move in mm -hmm. because that's important to them. Right. It won't be important to our generation. Our generation will want 52 different meal choices sure. delivered to our door. Th these folks don't want it delivered to their door. You know, right. So our lens will change, but we have to make sure that we're when we change assisted living for us, mm -hmm. that it's for us, right. not for mom who... who that's not important. As a different to. And that's the thing I wanted to get into because I, it really seems like if you're going to choose a place to make your home and you, then you want to have this thought that this will be the home that you can enjoy for uh, quite a while and that you don't want to have to move again. That's one of the things that uh, it would seem like it would seem, and correct me if I'm wrong, that you would want to look for a place that has a great deal of, of stability, that it's not every two weeks you're meeting new people and things like that but also a place that you can age in place with. Mm -hmm. And it, tell us a little bit about Hibiscus Court itself, how that would fit against those kind of thoughts. So the, the regulation um, for assisted living is really pretty simple. Mm -hmm. It's whoever moves into assisted living, you have to be able to say um, as that facility that you can meet the person's needs. Mm -hmm. So... That said, there's lots of good assisted livings out there mm -hmm. that do one thing or another, but they only do a swath of that continuum of mm -hmm. care. Um, for example, memory care, perfect mm -hmm. example. There are wonderful memory care communities in our community, but that's all they do. Mm -hmm. So if you have a spouse, it's really hard to get a situation that a spouse doesn't have dementia and the, the other one does um, because there's nothing for the person that doesn't have dementia to do in that situation, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. they can't live together. Ah. That's a basically, or they don't want to live together, they could. Um, there's also staffing, how people staff their facilities. Doesn't mean one is right or one is wrong, but for continuum of care, that's one of my favorite questions that come on all these internets. Well, what are your staff ratios? Um, when, we're, <laughs> when we're talking about, um, you know, when a, a person comes in, because that's on the checklist, that's on yeah. everybody's checklist. And my answer to that is very simple. If somebody has a pat answer to that, then it's just walk away. Because the needs of our residents change every day. Uh -huh. We have to adapt to those changing needs. So, again, we've been there 20 years. 20 years. If we hadn't adapted, we wouldn't still be here right. 20 years later, right? So I credit a lot of that with those wonderful foundation of senior staff that are there. And then adding new people. Because when we add new people, they give us a fresh look mm -hmm. at ourselves. They ask great questions. Uh, countless times we'll look at each other and we go, why do we do it that way? Mm -hmm, um, because mm -hmm. somebody asked us for the first time. So I think it's that combination of that wonderful foundation and then those people that come on new and say, hey, how about, you know, and that's the dynamic that works for us. So it's really not all longevity. Mm -hmm. It's longevity with the ability to change um, right. because longevity in itself is stagnant. Right. right? That's good. So I, I think that's part of it. But the staffing issue is one of those areas that, that is always a pet peeve of mine because um, 
what somebody needs today is going to change. We constantly reevaluate that. Mm -hmm. You have to have communication with your family. It's just as important as it is coming in and making mm -hmm. that decision. And once somebody is in that situation, what can we do to help them? Mm -hmm. What can the family bring to the table? What can we do? And it's just like you started, as we say, this talk. You started the talk when somebody lost car keys for one one right. time, right? And we started talking about the needs and how we would handle things as people age mm -hmm. and come into other situations. So now you're in this building, needs are not going to just be the same. They're going to continue to change. So we have to have that continuous conversation with families right. about what's changing because nobody wants a surprise. Right. Um, and everybody wants their parent cared for. So Absolutely. sometimes it's about managing expectations. But, um, you know, back to that staffing issue, people talk about small group homes, and there are some nice ones out there. Mm -hmm. But they'll say, well, they have a one to five ratio. Well, not quite. When you think that that same staff person that's changing mom, helping her take a shower, do all those behind the door kinds of things, who's cooking? Right. They don't have a chef. That person's cooking. And they might be great, but that person's cooking, that person's serving, that person is doing housekeeping, that person is doing the laundry, they're doing the grocery shopping. And and now when you look at all those jobs together, there's not a whole lot of time for, for care. Yeah. You know, So you have to balance that. And like I said, there's a lot of really good small homes out there, but you cannot compare an apple to an orange, right? right? We are just about out of time, but I wanted to say if somebody wanted to get in touch with you and maybe take a tour, how's the best way for them to get in touch? Well, there's there's a variety of ways. Um, I say the most fun way is to find us on Facebook uh -huh. because you can just kind of see some of our, our antics, if you mm -hmm. will, um, of what we've done that week. Uh -huh. um, and that's kind of fun. It gives somebody a little window into our world before they get there. Um, we also have a 360 tour out there mm -hmm. um, that someone could see the actual building itself. Uh -huh. um, it's a pretty nice place. Um, you can also do the conventional methods, which is pick up the phone and just give us a call. And what's your number? 321-951-1050. One more time. 321-951-1050. <laughs> well, thank you, Heidi, for being with us today. It's been a pleasure. Really enjoyed it. And thank you, too, viewer, for tuning in. And now, hopefully, you're ready to have that talk. I'm Joe Stackler. Thank you for joining our program today. I'd like to remind you that our senior information line is available to you at 321-473-7770. There you can get help and direction that could be helpful for your specific situation or circumstances. The work of helping seniors is very important, but we can't do it alone. That is why our sponsors here in Burrard County are so important. I'd like to thank our many area sponsors, businesses and medical providers who support the mission of helping seniors that help us carry the cost of our media efforts. If you'd like to join us either as a business partner or simply donate as an individual, we would welcome your call at 321-473-7770. You are always welcome to visit our website at www.helpingseniorsofbrevard.org. Thanks so much for your help. It does make a difference.